Hi, in uh, today's video I'm actually just going to quickly cover how to handle spills to TempDB. Now this particular video is uh, mainly a follow-up in terms of uh, a recent article that I was reading on parameter sniffing and uh, some other performance techniques that you would use when you're working with SQL Server. So uh, in order to work with this, what I felt was uh, it would be easier to show the example and then uh, kind of explain what's happening there so that uh, you get an idea about what's going on. So uh, to begin with, if you look here, I have a, a query and uh, in this query what you'll see is that I've just got a very simple inner join between uh, multiple tables. So it's not really very complicated, it's a standard uh, join between two tables and uh, what I'm trying to do in this particular query is I'm fetching a huge volume of data and uh, uh, to make sure that I get some kind of spill behavior what I've done is I've configured the RAM on the server as you can see here to only 512 megabytes so that should be small enough if you look at the query you'll see that it's a simple select left out to join where I'm using a variable which is called at unit and I'm using uh, parallelism as one basically just to kind of force uh, 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 the spill behavior to kind of happen. So to start off with what I'll do is when I go ahead and clean the procedure cache at the moment and then uh, this is my procedure which I just wanted to show you so I'll go ahead and execute this as well you'll see that uh, I'm gonna select a huge volume of data and how many rows get fetched is decided by what kind of uh, unit price I'm filtering for. So to start off with I'm gonna use a unit price of 3000 so when I do this what happens is that this procedure gets executed for a filter where the unit price is greater than 3000 and you'll see that I actually get 7,788 uh, 7, rows there and uh, if you look at the execution plan you'll see that other than the missing index everything else seems to be straightforward so I've got uh, two tables cancer hash match join and a sort operator because of the auto buy clause now see what happens when I go ahead and reduce the filter criteria for a smaller value of 200 now what this means is that naturally I'll be fetching a, a, a significantly larger volume of data so if I go ahead and execute this now uh, you'll see that uh, the memory grant that was allocated for the first part of it was sufficient to handle 7,000 odd rows but as soon as the number of rows increased to uh, 60,082 I, I can't really tell if you can see this but uh, as you can see here, it's uh, 60,820 uh, rows over here. And now when you look at the execution plan, you'll see that I've got warnings on the hash match as well as the sort operator. And uh, when I uh, zoom in, you'll see that it's basically telling me that the operator spilled to MDB, which is basically SQL Server's way of telling you that it's run, it doesn't have enough memory to handle all this data in the RAM, and therefore it's going to use the TempDB to uh, take care of some of that information. Now the interesting thing that you'll notice here is that if I go ahead and free the procedure cache and uh, do this one more time and this time instead of executing the 3000 which had the fewer number of throws if I start off with the 200 the memory grant that's allocated for this procedure by default is already big enough to handle a significantly larger volume of data in this case as you can see here it's 60820 and as a result you'll see that the sort operator now doesn't have a hash, uh, doesn't have a spill operator associated with it. Now after this if I go ahead and run the 3000 there's still not going to be any change in the execution plan because uh, basically this particular procedure has uh, enough of the memory grant associated with it to handle 60,000 rows so 7,000 odd rows is not really that big a deal and therefore this procedure now doesn't seem to have any kind of spill behavior that's happening to TempDB. So this is basically what I wanted to show you in terms of how SQL Server decides how much resources to allocate to a procedure. And you'll see that in this case it's not ideal because uh, depending on which value got executed first, that's the kind of allocation that happens. So if the first execution is some kind of edge case, then you're likely to end up with a procedure that's not optimized. So one way that you can handle it is like this. So you'll see here what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and execute this procedure and the key point here in this procedure is the fact that I've added one more hint and that is the optimize for. So if you look here what you're seeing is that optimize for at unit equal to 200 which means that even though the first value that I pass might be 3000 the procedure at the time of compiling is going to create an execution plan that's optimized for the at unit variable to have a value of 200.
All right. So now that we have that, let me go ahead and free the procedure cache again, clean up the RAM, and uh, let me go ahead and execute this guy, the 3000. So when I execute the 3000, you'd assume that what's going to happen here is that, as you can see here, uh, we've got the uh, 7000 odd rows, correct? And you'd think that maybe SQL Server has allocated a smaller amount of RAM considering that it's only working with 7000 rows. But see what happens when I go ahead and execute the same procedure now for 200 uh, as the uh, unit price for which we're filtering. You'll see that again I've got the 60,000 odd rows, but except this time I don't have a spill operator associated with it because even though the first execution was fetching only 7,000 odd rows, the memory grant or the amount of resources allocated is still optimized for a value of 200. So this is one way of handling the scenario where you're not really recompiling the procedure but you're compiling the procedure the first time with a value that you think would be uh, used the majority of the times that this execution happens and this is one way to handle the scenario the other way to handle it is to actually force a recompile so in this case what you'll see is that I'm not telling it to optimize for any particular value you'll see that I'm basically just telling it that recompile the statement every time it, it executes so this procedure basically every time it executes it's not really going to be doing for a specific value instead what it's going to do is that it's gonna look at the conditions at the runtime and then allocate as needed so I'll go ahead and just execute this now and this is the now uh, the procedure that I have so let me go ahead and free up the cache yeah and this time if I go ahead and say 3000 you'll see that it executes for 3000 and I've got like 7788 rows and no spill operator here and then again if I go ahead and do it for 200 again there is no problem in terms of memory allocations because uh, what's what's gonna happen is that it's gonna recompile the procedure once more and you'll see that again even though I've not specifically told the variable to be uh, optimized for a specific value, because of the recompile, SQL Server internally knows that it's supposed to optimize this code considering the uh, new amount of rows that are being fetched. So these are one of the two different ways that you can go ahead and work with your procedure, especially if you feel that it's not working properly because of the parameter values that are being passed in. And uh, I hope it's uh, a good starting place for you to get an understanding in terms of how to write your code when you're working with SQL because the statistics and the amount of rows getting fetched have a significant impact in terms of the performance of the query. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and uh, thank you for watching.